How's it going, everyone? This is Wimbo. Today we are going to have another quick Blender tutorials, which is about cosmetic swatches. Well, I just done one videos about cosmetic swatches a couple of days ago, but apparently I was using the sculpting mode and the sculpting tools to really creating some inorganic shape of of swatches. It can be a little bit challenging for beginners. For this time, I'm actually just using the typical modeling tools to creating some swatches like this in here in Blender. As you can see, this is the my finished file that you can take a look at and see what's going on. It's pretty easy scenes. You, we have a couple of lights going on here. So we actually have three lights and a couple of things that uh, uh, you can see here. We we have some of that is invisible. Or how can you turn it off? It's basically you select the lights and then go to the object properties and then you uncheck this camera one. Well, this tutorial is not about lighting. So you see, I just gonna quickly show you what's going on in the scene. Okay, without talking too much, let's get into how to starting a new file. Okay, now we're inside of new file and what I will do, I mean, just deleted everything in the scene and then start with the front view. And I will do shift A to adding a, a plane, whatever you wanna do, hit adding a plane. And then I go to the tab and uh, uh, hit A to select everything and hit M to collapse. Okay, so now the entire plane has become one single vertex and then go to the front view and then I'm gonna hit E to extrude. So basically what I'm trying to do here, I'm just creating some uh, profile look for this uh, cosmetic swatch, okay? And hit E again. You know, you don't have to photo anything because later on we are going to having our subsurface modifier apply. So I'm basically just trying to get in a general shape and just giving a, a little bit volume because you know, when when you actually do uh, swatches, you will have something to, when, when you kind of smash the inside of center areas and then the other liquid or any other uh, items that is gonna be pushed to on this side. So we have some bumps on the side. That's basically pretty much it. So next thing what I would do here, and I'm gonna select everything, hit tab, select everything A, and then I'm gonna hit E to extrude along the Y axis. I'm just gonna grab something over here, okay? As you can see, we get something going on here. Go to the solid mode. We're just having this big sheet going on here. But apparently I don't think this is long enough. I just hit the G. Y to grab it on this side, I think should be fine. And the next thing I will do, coming out to the edit mode, and I'm gonna hit Control and three to adding a subsurface modifier with a three level, okay? So then you're gonna select this item, hit the Tab key and Control R to adding a loop cut, just left click. And then immediately right click and then you're gonna hit the control B to bevel it. And then you can quickly just kind of pushing this, this one edge to the other side. So now we have a little bit nice and sharper edge uh, on, the, on the edge on this side. So the subsurface modifier is not gonna mess up too much. And next thing what I will do here, I'm going to hit right click and shade smooth. So basically this is kind of like the default one single strokes strokes that we're trying to accomplish. If we can move in here, uh, just rotate it, hit R, and the holding control that you can control the the 15 degrees increments when you're rotating it. Once you have this, okay, so, so we're still in the solid mode. What I can do here, we can even adding a array modifier. So you can see we are just adding more along the X axis factors. So if I'm clicking more so we're just going to have more strokes on here but apparently we i don't really want to having each strokes just feeling like they're barely touching each other so we actually wanted them to overlap a little bit to creating a little bit better realist look so what i would do here i can just kind of changing these factors you know i can just dragging up and down and uh, to kind of changing the distance Better way to do that is holding the Alt key and then just kind of click and drag a tiny bit, 
right? This is actually going to a little bit smaller increment. So now you can see here we have something over little overlap. So I want to do uh, a little bit adjustment on that. So maybe we I, we can do uh, point eight or maybe 0.95 it just overlapped a little bit so it will be a little bit easier to see later on okay so I feels like this is like still too short I'm just gonna select the one edge hit the G X to grab it and then I'm also going to type it out adding more strokes on here so it just looks like what we have done earlier okay so this is something we will do and this is still called a plane and also all the modif modifiers being applied so what I will do next I'm going to apply this array modifier well usually what I was suggesting is to to du duplicate it, what you have and to to have save a backups is always a good habit to do so so what I will do here I can do shift D to kind of uh, duplicate the thing and right click and then let it sit back I just gonna uh, uncheck everything and then so we have a backup in here so what we can do here we can just kind of apply the array modifier hit apply so now if I'm tap into this object we're gonna see well we have all the vertex going on here so this is actually uh, several different individual items we want well because we are going to creating a, a gradient right the problem is we are going to have it all separate colors for each unit although this is still considered one single mesh but what we can do here we can separate them uh, into a small uh, individual items so what we can do here is hit tab and select everything hit a to select everything just hit the p and then you will see a separate menu to asking you separate by selection or materials by loop parts we are want to using the loose parts okay so if you hit this p watch what's going to happen here uh, it is actually having all of these planes coming out so it's a total about 12 individual ones so if i'm hit the tab again to come back to the object mode so every single one so it's become one single unit okay so this is exactly what we want and what we can do here we can select this and the rest of these and by holding control and shift and the click clicking all these and hit m and to adding a new collections we can just do swatches okay so we put them all together okay so this is still the backup one so we because we uncheck everything else in here so now what we what can do here we can just go to the sh shading tab and uh, basically we can just adding a, a light uh, any area light this is just for demonstration so uh, give you some ideas about how this thing looks like and we can do 5000 and uh, what we can do here we can go to the right view and just kind of giving some lights going on here and now if we go to the the render view so if I hit that you can see we have something going on here and I see I think the light is still not too strong so I'm probably gonna do a little bit more uh, just gonna Oh, is ooh, it's too much <laughs> so I'm going to I think 50,000 should be pretty bright okay so because right now the everything is not being texturized so what we can do here for example we just select the one and hit the new and we can just to start adding uh, materials on the on, on that so the another thing I want to do here I am probably just gonna dragging a a uh, reference image so you can utilizing this reference image to getting the color that you want okay so we select the top one so I'm what I would do here I'm gonna hit the E and just sample the color right here so so as you can see here it's still adding a little bit of color on there it's just not showing that much uh, what I would do here I believe the light is too strong so I probably gonna die to one to kind of see yeah you can see here there's a little bit color coming out but earlier would just because the the uh, overexpose 
so even for this one so I can just do another one and hit E to sample the color but the problem that you can see here the this is the roughness is pretty high so it's not really like uh, reflecting the cosmetic product is, uh, it will have some roughness but uh, it's not supposed to be that 0.5 that high so I would say anywhere 0.3 to 0.4 so I can do here and that so what you can do next you can just to to select each individual one and then you just adding the materials that one by one okay and if you really don't want to to do that all by yourself you can find a little bit easier way to to do so it just to to select a new one and to pick a existing one right so put that and then what you need to do here you need to making sure to click this number icon so you will that materials become uh, a separate one so you can use it as an individual one right now it's being shared by two Unit, so I we don't want to do that. Hit that, and then you're gonna do hit E to select the next color that you want to have. So you can just gradually having the color build it up. Eventually having all that uh, to come in. All right, so you don't need to change any uh, roughness going on here in this shader anymore. So this is basically how we do it and uh, it definitely you need to spend more time tweaking on the lighting and the scenes and also of course your products in order to having a pretty cool uh, scenes like like these what I've done so it just have you give you the natural look and uh, and the people people will say well this is not really feel like uh, a very organic shape well sometimes for cosmetic commercial photographies a lot of uh, uh, images or things that looks a little bit unrealistic but the problem is that people feel like that still feel pretty beautiful authentic elegant the reason is that our human brain is trying to when we look at pictures we're trying to teach our uh, eyes were brain to making sense of everything when you see all these stripes when you see a a bottle with a, a tiny drops of of cosmetic uh, items then you will think this is a kind of foundation stripes or, or swatches that just try your brain is going to teach you this feels a little very real so that's something that i'd be aware so you can do a lot of amazing stuff and just be uh, be more conscious about how you place and how you uh, creating these stripes in order to to kind of getting the best result that you want through your artistic um judgment okay so this is pretty much what we want to talk about and thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video bye